Well, hello, beautiful people. Welcome back. Welcome to a video where we are sitting down and finally testing out some of the makeup that I've been accumulating over the last, I would say, two to three-ish weeks. And uh, we have a little bit of everything. We've got some makeup forever, a little bit of Tarte, the Exa Primer and Foundation, which I actually mentioned in a video a while ago, probably my last, like, full-face new makeup. I'll link it up here. Um, but I mentioned that I picked up this brand that I'd never heard of from Ulta, and I've been saving it for this video specifically, saving it so that way we could talk about it, see, you know, what our thoughts and opinions are. And uh, so yeah, we're gonna get into that. We've got the stuff from One Size, which is Patrick Starr's brand. And of course, we also have the new Eternal Eclipse palette from a little Mr. Manny MUA from Lunar Beauty, because you guys, he sent that palette over and I have been using it nonstop, like every single day. I know you've heard me talk about it here over on Instagram, and I'm just really excited to be able to bust it out and just, you know, see what we can do with it. I'm not really sure like what direction I'm feeling. I'm kind of feeling neutral, but I'm kind of feeling like maybe like a little spice, just like a, like a little bit, a little bit of something. But also, by the way, I did finally get my ColourPop order from Rob Beauty. Christy, a bunch of you guys have been asking. And uh, yeah, I picked up with this, by the way, the ColourPop makeup wipe. So maybe we'll kind of, you know, dabble around with those today, see what we think. Um, but as far as the collection goes, I probably will play around with it. Maybe, um, you know, kind of dabble in some of these little super shocks or maybe even the glosses. Um, but I don't think as far as like the palette and the overall collection, we're not going to be diving into it too far today, just because I really do want to focus on Manny's palette because it is so, so damn beautiful. But I just figured regardless of whatever we're using today, I just wanted to let you guys know that mine did finally show up just in terms of um, shipping and stuff like that, because I know with ColourPop, that's always kind of a concern. Um, but yeah, I was, I was just really excited. Mine got here, and uh, I'm excited to test it out, which actually, what a perfect segue. Um, if you're new here, hello, I like to pause at the start of my videos. I like to introduce myself. Um, so if you're new here, hi, my name is Paige. This is Seeking Alexandria. Welcome to the channel. I do upload three new videos a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, right around 7, 7.30-ish a.m. But of course, if you haven't done so yet, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it if you would take a second and go follow me over on Instagram, because uh, uh, this, this is where the segue comes in from the ColourPop palette to here because Instagram for me is where I actually put a ton of extra content, whether it is makeup inspo photos, plus size fashion, um, makeup reels, IGTV, stuff like that, like step-by-step -step tutorials. I love doing um, just all of that extra stuff that I obviously can't fit on the channel and I don't have time to do over here. Um, I just, I love to incorporate it over there. Really for me, Instagram is just like that extra added little hub where if you like me, you like my personality, you love the behind the scenes aspect of it, um, there's always a ton of stuff that that you can watch in the feed. And then there's usually stuff too in the uh, the Insta stories, which is like the day-to-day -day portion, where I love to just stop on, we hang out, we do unboxings in the office, I ask you guys all of life's questions, um, which as of recent, I think we talked about b b boba tea, bubble tea, something, whatever that tea is, okay? Um, we talked about that and really we just communicate, we hang out and it's just kind of the fun way to do like the behind the scenes feel where there's none of this, you know, lighting and angles and, and all of this type of stuff. So like I said, if you are into that though, you want the behind the scenes, you want more of me, I would greatly appreciate it if you would check out my Instagram. And uh, from there, let's go ahead, let's zoom the camera in and let's get started. All right, beautiful people. So we're good zoomed in. I have the hair tucked back here and we're going to start off with the brand Exa. These are the couple things that I picked up from Ulta and this is their Jumpstart Smoothing Primer as well as their High Fidelity Semi Satin Foundation. And obviously we're going to kick it off first with the primer, which, oh, I actually, I quite like this packaging here. It feels really nice, like quality wise. Love this color too. Oh my God, how, how beautiful are you. All right, let's give it a little shake here. I don't, I don't, I don't even know if it's liquid. Um, it says here that it's just a jumpstart smoothing primer charged with triple antioxidant blend. Okay, it does, doesn't really say much else. Um, so let's go ahead. It does have a pump. Okay, so it looks to be more of like a smoothing silicone primer from what I can see. Um, very light in terms of the texture. It's not like a thicker whipped consistency. So I'm just going to take and put a little bit of this through here, mainly concentrating it on the T-zone, because for me, that's that's the worst area by far. I'm gonna take and just lightly kind of press and pat that out, and then pad the excess over my cheeks right here. Okay, and while that's settling in, let's go ahead and take a look here at the foundation, which again, this is their High Fidelity Semi Satin Foundation, and I have it in the shade Liam 480, which does appear to be a little bit dark for me, but you know, we shall see. It says here, uh, protective microalgae actives, soothing Makai berry and hydrating hyaluronic acid team up with advanced pigment technology to wear light and long lasting. Ooh, okay. Exa supports women's voices for the earth, whose mission is to eliminate the toxic chemicals that harm our health and the planet. Ooh, I like this. Okay. So I have some on my face right here, and obviously the uh, the color is not uh, mine, I don't, I don't think, um, but we're going to make it work. We're just going to blend it out with concealer. I'll shape out the face. It's okay. If you're new here, we do this often because I never pick the right shade. So I'm just going to start off by blending it in with a sponge. 
and uh, seeing what kind of a build we can get. Oh, that actually spreads really nicely. And you know what? The color, I mean, it's not awful. It's definitely still not my color, but it's not the worst. Ooh, what does that smell like? It smells like orange. Does this have like orange peel in it or something? That smells really nice, quite refreshing. So I just went ahead and I built up a little extra on this side, um, just trying to see as far as the coverage goes, what I can get with a sponge. Because with a sponge, I'm really loving the texture of this pressed in. It's a very, very thin, more liquidy foundation. But I'm also noticing that because it's so thin and liquidy, it's not really building up as much with a sponge. So I think for the other side, I'm gonna take a little bit here on this brush. This is just a Luxie 532 round top blender brush and uh, I'm gonna take and do the same thing over there like the same amount so going in with a brush so far that's just my first little coat right there and I actually quite like it I think it looks pretty and I do think I'm getting more coverage which again that is to be expected especially with a thinner foundation um and I think too even just in applying it with a brush it does look really pretty okay so I just went ahead and actually built up the coverage on both sides a little bit this was the sponge side right here and I really like like the look of this foundation after it's all built up like it looks beautiful and the texture of it still really sinks into the cheeks and is a lot more smoothing uh, with a brush but I am noticing that like right through here like right through the uh, the nose the t-zone um, it is getting a little bit more streaky which isn't uncommon for me especially with a thinner formula when I use a brush so I'm just going through and pressing that whole area in making sure everything is pressed and uh, yeah it actually looks really beautiful but holy crap is that super dewy to anybody else Oh my god, like it looks beautiful. If you're a dry skin kind of person, oh my god, this is this is so damn dewy. All right, so next up, going into concealer, I have these two ones that I've never tried before. These are from Makeup Forever, and these are their matte velvet skin. And oh wow, those are both pretty light. I have 2.1 and 2.2, which I'll be using 2.2, I think, um, with this foundation, especially because it's so dark. But this concealer was actually really recommended by a couple of you guys. Um, we were talking, I want to say maybe like three or four-ish weeks ago, something like that we were talking in the community tab and I had asked you guys if there was anything I should try because Makeup Revolution was having a very nice sale which by the way if you're new here um and you don't know what, what I'm talking about over in the community tab I do post a lot of like sales deals um anything that like I think would interest me personally I like to share with you guys as well and uh, this was one of those times and I asked you guys you know is there anything that I should try like what, what are your guys's favorites and a couple of you said that this concealer was just absolutely beautiful that it lasted really well and I thought we would give it a try and it actually this color this 2.2 looks beautiful with this foundation it really helped kind of correct it because the foundation it's not that it was like looking awful awful I mean it was definitely too dark but the yellow tone of it was just a little bit too intense and I feel like the yellow tone in this concealer actually helped kind of combat that a little bit and god they blend beautifully together like, how nice does that look? And it brought down the shine of the foundation just a little bit, too. Ooh, that's really nice. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go in with that other shade, 2.1, just a little teeny bit of it, like, right up under the eyes because it is so light. I think it'll be really brightening. Maybe just a little bit like here and here too. Um, but a couple of you guys over there when we were talking about this concealer, you guys said that it had a really beautiful finish and um, that it was like a, a nice kind of a softer matte texture on the skin. And I see what you're talking about now because it almost is giving like a really nice um, a softness to it where it's not just like a hyper, you know, like texturizing kind of matte. It just has like a nice softness to it. Okay, so next up we're going in with the one size powder. I'm just taking this um, under the eyes and through the T-zone. And this is the powder from Patrick Starr's new brand, his one size line, if you didn't know. Um, he created this makeup line. He's launched a palette, some liners, which I do have those. Um, oh my God, he launched a powder puff too. Paige, you idiot, hold on. Okay, so here is the powder puff. It's just, you know, a straight up regular little puff. And I actually really like the shape of this. The profile is really cute. So I'm gonna take some of this and I'm gonna press it into the areas that I haven't already pressed into. Okay, you guys, so I had to zoom you in like really, really, close for this but I'm noticing on my face we're having some issues because the foundation I don't know if you can see it but like it's not um it's not sticking to my face like I have no foundation in this whole section right here it's not sticking um like under my eyes it's not sticking here and it's also not really wanting to stick like right in the center of my forehead 
and I don't know if you can see it. I think you can see it on the side of my nose right here, but it's so bizarre because like with me, you know, with my skin being more textured and more porous, I'm used to that to a certain extent with, you know, more dewy type foundations, but not usually this bad, like not to the point where it runs away from the nose, the face, um, and especially too, like right through here, my skin is actually fairly smooth in this area. And I thought for a second, maybe this was an issue with the concealer and the foundation. Like if the two were fighting, you know, maybe that could be part of it. But then I looked like along my jawline, my chin, like all of the other areas where I put both items, I'm not having any issues. Now, sometimes there can be an issue with foundations if they're more like super dewy, which obviously this one is, or maybe it's more of an oily tight base. Um, you can have issues with those types of um, foundations and powders where once you powder it, it just kind of lifts off your face just because it's not really meant to like stick down. It's meant to be more of like a fluid kind of film over your skin, if that makes sense. And so, yeah, maybe this is just one of those foundations that when you powder it, it just immediately lifts up um, just because it doesn't really have like any grip or staying power to your actual skin. But either way, I'm going to go ahead, zoom the camera back out. And I just wanted to give you guys <laughs> a little bit of an update as far as what we got going on here. Cause uh, yeah, I think, I think you might notice that there's just, you know, no foundation chilling on the side of my nose. All right. Now that we're good and zoomed out here, I just went ahead and I um, got the rest of the face set down. I used my usual It Cosmetics. This is the Celebration Foundation Press Powder in the shade Light. And then from there, I'm just going in with some bronzer and blush because I don't have anything new for either of those. So for bronzer, I'm just going in with some of my airbrush bronzer from Charlotte Tilbury. This is in the shade Medium. So I'm going in with the Chantecaille blush. This is in the shade Emotion. It's the little B one that uh, I tested this out. What? Like testing a full face of Chantecaille. I'll link it up here. Um, I tested it out a while ago and I have been using this blush so much lately because it looks so beautiful. Like not only is the color super nice, but the um, the texture of it on my cheeks is really beautiful. It's very nice and smoothing. Not gonna lie guys, I need all the help I can get with texture right now because this foundation, it is not looking good. Like right in both of these areas where I'm more textured over my cheeks, it looks so thick and cakey and my nose, oh dear God, <laughs> my nose looks absolutely horrible. It looks just like all my little pores are just like white and speckled all over this area. Not cute. Um, so yeah, for me, this foundation so far, not really loving it, okay? <laughs> but, 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 not loving it. But I do love her. I love that Diet Coke with light eyes. But, 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 I'm loving you. Mm. All right, so two things. Who was going to tell me, first of all, <laughs> that my lips were all kinds of busty, crusty, and covered in foundation because <laughs> it's not good. Um, so I wiped that off. I'm just going to put on a little bit of the e.l.f. Um, CBD lip oil, which I actually just used this in a video testing new e.l.f. I'll link it up here if you haven't seen it um, because we talk about so much stuff in there. We've got, uh, yeah, everything. Primer, foundation. We have concealer. We have the new um, putty blushes, which are actually really beautiful. And uh, yeah, just if you haven't seen it, definitely worth checking out because e.l.f., y'all, yeah. <laughs> don't be sleeping on e.l.f. Their stuff is nice. Which actually, speaking of e.l.f., really quick here, I'm gonna use their Wow Brow. This is in the shade Brunette. And it's their, uh, their nice, thick, like, volumizing brow gel. And I've been using this a lot lately, too. It's actually a really nice brow gel. And then after we have that done, we're gonna go in with, ooh, what is this? This is the what I picked up from Tarte. It's their Big Ego DIY Brow Detailing Pen. And I have it in the shade Medium Brown, and it looks like it has kind of a slanted little brush tip on it. And uh, you can use it to make just these tiny little strokes, which you can't, you can't even see on camera because uh, the shade medium brown is actually very light. Let me see if I can build that up. Can you see that a little bit better? There we go. I actually kind of like this little flicky pen because you can actually cover, because it's thicker, you can cover more room with it, like more area. If you have, you know, like I do, I have like this uh, sparse arch up here. You can fill it in a lot faster, but still get that, um, that nice little flick going on. And then of course I have to go in and cut out my undersides right here with the concealer, just a little bit of that Makeup Forever, just to make sure things are nice and even, because uh, yeah, even though I like to have a nice fluffy top side, my bottom side, bitch, I always gotta cut her with concealer. She's gotta be nice and clean and smooth and ready for some eyeshadow. All right, you guys, so now with the brows done, we're we're moving on to eyes. And when I tell you my skin right now looks so, <laughs> so bad, um, like this is the kind of foundation that you can't come back from, like no matter how hard you try, because the smile lines on the side of my mouth alone look so awful, so settled in. Like they, they look like little well-traveled highways going up like I-75 North, just like <laughs> living their best lives. Like people are traveling these, commuting them day to day, day to night, fucking going to work, living their days on these damn smile lines. That's how settled they are. And then also like, 
like the fine lines, the wrinkles on my forehead. Great, love the Hulk. Okay, she's mm, up there living her best aggressive life. And then of course you, you know, don't don't want to forget the nose here. These crevasses on the side, like right here and right here. <laughs> Looking so great, so settled. Love, love that for me. Okay, so the skin, the skin looks like shit, but but um, we're not gonna let that derail us, okay? Because for the eyes, we have the new Lunar Beauty Eternal Eclipse palette, and Manny sent this over, and you guys, I have been using it ever since it got here. Like I'm talking damn near every single day. This has been my go-to palette because, well, not not only I mean, look at it. How could you not choose this? Okay, it's so beautiful. Like the packaging presentation is just gorgeous. For me, the color story of this, it's just so user friendly, and that's coming from someone you guys know. I am much more of like a neutral Nelly kind of person, and what I love. About about this is that it has the perfect balance of these really nice light tones in here, very easy, like day to day, you know, throw it on, put it through the crease, put a shimmer on the lid, go out the door. And I love that aspect of it. But then at the bottom here, you've got this other row. Okay, this is fun little spicy row. And in this row, you've got these blue tones, you have more grays, you've got this shimmery, beautiful black shade right here. And they're just so, so gorgeous to go in and spice up like a day to day look. Like if you want something on the lower lash line, if you want to add it to the inner and outer V. And then also too, just as a side note, you know, the, the color story being what it is, obviously that's like a personal preference, but Manny's shadows are some of the best freaking shadows I have ever used, hands down. Like the quality, the texture, the blendability, the build, everything about them is so beautiful. And uh, I just, yeah, I feel like, oh God, his stuff is just so, so nice. And you can tell that there's so much work and so much detail put into everything that he produces. Anyways, enough of me talking. Let's go ahead. I'm going to um, put some concealer on the lids, get them primed, and we're going to get into some kind of an eye look. I don't know, I don't know what the hell we're going to do because because I kind of wanted to do something that was more chill and neutral, but like also the shade Deep Sea, like come, ugh, come on. Like I love this shade. I love Meteor. I have used this so many times. It's so beautiful. Um, there's also Night Sky. These are just like some of my favorite shimmeries. Oh my God, this is a black with multi-glitter in it. <gasps> so good. And then also, you know what, while we're here, I should probably swatch Flare for you, this color right here. It is the lightest shade in the palette. It's so gorgeous. Oh my God, that shimmer shade right there. Like watch her glimmer. Oh, it's so good. Uh, but anyways, let's go ahead. I'm going to prime the lids and then we're going to get into, uh, yeah, some kind of an eye look. I, I just, I don't know what, okay? I can't commit right now. All right, so I think just as a safe little starting point, we're going to start off with Dusk right here. It's just a nice lighter matte brown. And I'm taking this on a BH V19. I'm just gonna, you know, like I said, lightly kind of dust that through the crease. But also, just as a side note, if you didn't hear or see, Manny is also, or has also launched some brushes. He has his own little eye collection bundle, and I am so freaking excited. I haven't got my hands on them yet, obviously, because they were, uh, they were stuck in shipping for a while, but it is to my understanding that they are rapidly moving to his warehouse, or they're at his warehouse, and I am so next level excited. Okay, so I think I might do something, like, way different than I normally do. Like, I'm talking way different. And I might take this Lagoon, which is like a deep blue, and put that on the inner and the outer, and then just very, very gently like blend it toward the crease. That way most of my crease is just like this light brown shade with like, you know, the inner and outer being blue. And then I could also pop like this bright shiny blue right in the center. What do we think? Is that too much? Is that not enough? Should I maybe, you know what? Maybe I should have like one more transition shade, probably a good idea. So I'm gonna take the shade Sandstorm right here, the one right in the middle on the same brush and I'm just going to very gently kind of dust that through. Again, not being overly precise with this portion. I just want to make sure that everything is blended. That way when I go in with the blue, it has something to blend into, if that makes sense. All right, so from there, I'm going to take my little Sigma brush. This is their Blending E25. It's kind of like a flat blender and we are going to dip into Lagoon. So I'm just going to start here ever so gently and then also do the same thing on the inner portion. And then I'm just going into with the tip of the brush here, no additional product, and I'm very lightly blending it just to help soften the edges. Like I don't want it to be, you know, blended through the crease, but I want it to have just enough um, blend so you can't see like the edges of the shades. At this point, I think it's time to go in with some glitter glue. Yeah, I think we're gonna do it, guys. We're just gonna go for the gusto. I'm taking my NYX glitter glue here. This is my favorite glitter glue. I'll link it down below. And I'm gonna take and just tap that all over the center of the lid right through here. From there, we're gonna go in with the shade Deep Sea, which, oh honey, there ain't no going back from this. And we are just going to pop that all over. 
Oh boy. <gasps> Oh my God in heaven, are you beautiful? And I'm just taking two of this very, very lightly with my finger and kind of tapping it all around. And then with a clean finger, very, very lightly kind of dispersing it up into the crease. So it's not like a harsh line. That way the blue just kind of fades. Also on top of that, I think I'm gonna take a little bit here of the shade Meteor, just as a little bit of like a glitter topper. And I'm gonna pop that right in the center. <sighs> Oh my God. Yep. That was a, that was a great decision. Um, this shade, by the way, on top of literally any eye look, oh, it's so good. It's just a nice little multi sparkly moment. All right. Now from there, just really quickly on the lower lash line, I am going to take some of the Lagoon, that dark blue shade, and I'm going to put that all down there just lightly up right up against the lower lash line. And underneath of that, I'm gonna go in, I think, with a little bit of Dusk, which is the brown shade that I worked through the crease. And I'm just gonna use that to very, very lightly kind of buff up against the blue just to diffuse it a little bit. All right, so I just went ahead and I added a little bit of the shade Flare, that bright one, just for an inner corner highlight. And I think at this point, I'm gonna run off of camera, obviously do this eye. And I just wanna say, okay, I am absolutely diehard obsessed with how this looks right now. Like, th this is so much better than what I had envisioned. And I, I, like, I can't even remember where I started, but I know that like this is definitely where I should have ended up because this is so damn beautiful. Like, why, why don't I wear blue every single day, all day? Like, all over my damn eyeballs. Like, bitch, just call me the 2020 Mimi Bobek, okay? Because I am here for it. Anyways, like I said, I'm going to run off really quick. I just, I can't stop looking at myself. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and do this eye and I will be right back. All right, guys. So obviously I am back. Both eyes are done. And I'm just going to buzz through a couple of other products because I don't have anything new for the next couple of steps. So first things first, I'm just taking some of my number seven Lift and Luminate powder. And I am running this up under the eyes and just kind of over like through the entire T-zone. Um, not only to brighten up this area, but also to try to help settle out some of the cracks, the crevasses, like the overall texture in this area. And then of course from there, I'm gonna go ahead and set my face. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Spray. For highlight, I'm going in with some of my Natasha Denona. This is her I Need a Nude Glow. I'm just taking that and very lightly kind of veiling it all over my cheeks because the, the color is a little bit dark for me. So I have to use this one as more of like an all over, you know, kind of a highlighty sheen. And then just to go in over top of that and give myself a more targeted highlight, like right at the tippy top of my cheekbone, I'm gonna go in with the ABH and Nicole Guerrero highlight kit. And I'm gonna take this shade right here, Forever Lit. And I'm gonna take it very, very, very lightly because it is more of, an, more of an intense highlight. And I'm gonna take it just very lightly, just kind of tap it right there, like right at the top of my cheekbone. Okay, and then at this point, it's time to finish up the eyes, and I'm gonna be going in with both of these. We have the Maybelline Lash Sensational Full Fan Effect Mascara, which I've been using this a lot lately. It is a beautiful, beautiful mascara. And then once I have that built up all over the lashes, I'm gonna go in with some of the Patrick Star. This is his uh, one size point made 24 hour gel eyeliner pencil, and this is in the shade Bodacious Black, which he also has a brown shade that is really beautiful. But this is is a 24-hour waterproof and ultra pigmented eye pencil that is also vegan. So I'm gonna go ahead and get both of these worked onto my eyes. All right, so really quick with the mascara and the liner on, I just wanted to mention a couple of things about the one size liner because I am really, really impressed with these. Again, I have the black one that I used today and the brown one, which I used, I think yesterday or the day before. And both of these in terms of the consistency, the staying power, like everything about them is just so beautiful and so bold. And I feel like as far as a liner goes like existing in my waterline, which as you guys know, very, very watery. Um, I feel like they do last really, really nicely and just the consistency application, they're very glidey. And uh, yeah, I just, I really enjoyed them. Again, I've only used them a couple of times, but they are really, really nice. So I wanted to mention that really quickly. And then finally, moving on to lips here, I do have two different options. I have the M Cosmetics. This is the Soft Blur, the Soft Blur Velvet Lip Liner. And this is in the shade Teddy, which I believe is more of like a nude brown shade. Oh, wow. That's really nice. The consistency of that is so beautiful. It's like a satin consistency. Oh, I like that a lot. I like the color. And then I also have from Makeup Forever. This is another item that was recommended by you guys. This is their Rouge Artist uh, Intense Color Beautifying Lipstick. And this is in the shade 104 Bold Cinnamon. And it comes in a, oh, it comes in, I don't know what the hell I was thinking this was, uh, but it comes in just a little regular lipstick bullet. And uh, yeah, this is the color. And actually those two colors, 
they're not, eh, eh, eh. I was just gonna say they're not that different, but they're definitely different. Um, the one from Makeup Forever is like a little bit too peachy from what I wanted for today, but I really like this Teddy. Oh, you know what I could do? Hold on. We could also go in <laughs> Raw Beauty Christie collection and we could grab the lip gloss because I have both of them, the clear one and the pinky shade, but I'm thinking we could grab the clear one and maybe completely fill our lips in with Teddy. Let's do that first because I love this color and I think it'll match beautifully with the uh, the eye look. Wow, I love this freaking lip liner. Oh yeah, got another favorite, guys. Look at that. The texture is so good and the liner itself is like so teeny and so precise. Oh gosh. So here is the lip liner on and applied, you guys. This is my color. <laughs> like the, this shade was meant for me. Thank you so much. Um, Yeah, love this. Again, the shade is Teddy and this is from M Cosmetics and oh, I am obsessed. And then, oh, it was also just as a side note, really quick, we're gonna go into the uh, gloss next here. This is Glacier from the ColourPop Raw Beauty Christie Collection. Just for those of you that might be wondering, Paige, why aren't you going in with Manny's uh, Liquid Lip and Manny's Aura Gloss, which are both absolutely stunning and beautiful and you love them. And to that, I would reply, first of all, yes, okay, they are absolutely beautiful, stunning, and all of the above. And I do highly recommend them. His liquid lipstick formula is second to none. It is so beautiful. The consistency, the pigmentation, it's it's literally perfection in a lipstick. And same with his gloss. It is my all-time favorite gloss formula. But I'm not going in with them in today's video just because I have already talked about them so, so much. Like, between here and Instagram, um, it's been a lot because I've been wearing them nonstop. They're actually in my purse right now. And the texture, consistency, all of that, like, for me, they're just a very easy go-to day in and day out. And I thought for today's video, because I've already talked about them so much, we could, you know, talk about something else and just, you know, maybe maybe not talk about them as much, even though I realized I just did sit here and talk about them for the last couple minutes. So that kind of backfired, but you know, you, you get the idea. Okay. The sentiment was there. I just wanted to show you guys a little something different. And uh, yeah, so, so that's, that's kind of what we did here, even though it's basically the same thing as what we would have had um, with that. Ooh, this is actually really pretty. Like the combo looks very nice. I have to say though, the texture of this gloss for me, it's a little bit, like, I don't know if you guys can see it on camera. Can you see that? Like, it's kind of getting chunky on the inside, and I don't know why. I don't like that texture. Is the other one like this? Hold on. I'm going to actually, I'm going to wipe this gloss off. This is so thick. I don't know why, because I didn't go in with, like, a lot of it, but it feels so heavy on my mouth. Where's the other shade? I want to know if it's just the white one because that's really bizarre. Was anybody else's like that? Tell, comment down below if you pick this up because I'm wondering if it's just like a me thing, like maybe I had something else on my lips. I'm gonna go in with this one. This is the shade Wildflower, which is technically the more pinky version, but I'm still gonna try it. See, this one's doing it too. See how it's got like the like the weird little stringies? I don't know why it's doing that. I've never had this happen with a ColourPop gloss where it's like, like, like that level of thick that it starts to get like weird and chunky. That is so bizarre. I'm gonna go ahead here and reline. And I think I'm just gonna go in with a different gloss because that is like so weird to me. I don't know what's going on. I'm gonna have to use that uh, that gloss at like a different time, maybe with a different liner. Cause for all I know, it may be the liner, I don't know. But it is so weird in terms of the texture. And then to go over it this time, I'm gonna take the True Gloss from M Cosmetics. This is their Caramel Glaze. And I'm just gonna take and put some of this over top of it. It's just like a, um, a brownie nude type gloss. But all right, you guys, with that, we are officially done. Obviously, this is how the full face came together. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and start this off with my up close. That way you guys can see how everything, namely my skin and foundation, is looking because it is a whole situation. So let's go ahead and get that up on the screen for you. And I think for me, that is probably the biggest issue that I'm having. And I don't even know if on camera, like it's gonna properly come across because the smile lines that I'm seeing like in real life and how it's settling around my nose and even on my cheek like in terms of the texture it is just so so intense and I feel like a lot of times especially under these beauty lights you guys really don't get like the full effect of it um no matter how much I you know turn it down and, and I get in nice and close I do I do everything I can do to obviously show you how things are looking but there's just some things oh <laughs> there's just some things that they don't quite convey the same on camera like for this foundation like I said even though I got as close as I could I feel like it's just not gonna properly come across um so for me I definitely think the foundation is probably the biggest fail 
well. And it kind of bums me out too because I feel like I wasn't able to get like a good read on some of the other products like the primer from that brand, the Makeup Forever, the concealer I tried, um, you know, just stuff like that that I wish I could have gotten a little bit more test out of. Obviously, I'll be going through and using them and I'll let you guys know in other videos kind of what I think. But for me, just in terms of this foundation, I definitely don't think it's the kind that um, is meant for either my skin or powder or some combination of both. But I will say just to touch on it really quickly here about the one size powder, the one from Patrick Star. I, I just wanted to throw this out there. I don't know if I said it earlier, but I did use this powder yesterday and I actually used it before this video on purpose because I wanted to make sure that going into this video and using it with a new concealer that I knew how it applied with a concealer that I already, you know, love and that I've used before. And so I used it yesterday with the Clinique All Over Eraser and Concealer or whatever, and that looked absolutely beautiful. Like the combo of the two was amazing. It was super smooth. And my foundation for that one was the Catrice. So it's a foundation that I know and love. It's a concealer I know and love, and the powder looked absolutely gorgeous. So I definitely don't think like in terms of this full face, I don't think it was an issue with the powder at all. I just wanted to point that out there just because, you know, that, that was the whole reason I used it yesterday was just in case something like this happened. And uh, yeah, I just, I didn't want there to be any kind of mix up with that because that powder is actually really beautiful from what I can see so far. Again, I've only used it a couple of times, but it does look really nice. And uh, so do these eyeliners too. Like I said, you know, I've already touched on this, but they're really nice, super glidey, and I really like those. And then also, obviously, I love the palette, the Manny palette. That's the Manny palette. I love his palette, the Eternal Eclipse. This is so, so nice. The quality is amazing. Um, I can't say enough good things about it. Like, I, I literally don't have one negative about this palette. I think it's beautiful, performs great, and uh, I really like the color story. I like that around the holidays, he came out with something that was just a little bit different. It had a little bit more depth, a little more grunge, and like that earthy feel to it, and I thought it was a really beautiful, you know, holiday collection-ish that was, you know, just different from what we see right now, so I really like that. I actually really surprisingly like this DIY brow from Tarte. I really, really like not only the application and like the, the tip of it, but the way that it looks in my brows, it has such a nice feathery, fluffy look. And uh, I like the fact that the tip on it is actually a little bit wider because it actually filled in my sparse brows a lot faster than like the other ones do, the ones that are just that little single hair tip. And so, yeah, I really like this. Again, the shade is medium brown. You guys, I think that that's everything. I don't have anything else I want to add. Um, and obviously, if there is anything I forget, I will, of course, leave it down in the description box or like in a pinned comment or something. Um, just because, you know, sometimes if I wear things more before this video goes up, I might, you know, want to throw something out there. But uh, yeah, I don't think for right now I have anything else to say. So let me know your guys' thoughts and opinions down below, whether it is on the products, the makeup, were you curious about any of this? Um, or, you know, have you tried it? Do you love it? Do you hate it? So on and so forth. Again, leave me all of your thoughts down below. And per usual, as I said at the start of the video, you can subscribe, turn on your post notifications, follow me on Instagram, which I would really appreciate. And uh, I think that that's everything. Thank you guys all so, so much for watching. Please don't forget to have an amazing day, night, weekend, whatever it is when you're watching this, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Are we on? Hello. Oh, we are on. <laughs> Hello. And for those of you, okay, so really this is the time. Come here, Denerna. Little baby Denerna. And I said, yeah, 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 yeah. I said, hey, what's going on? Okay, well, <laughs> clearly you see I'm a rock star.